Welcome to the third and final episode of the Mega Man X Guide series. I can explain that at the end though. Today we're discussing the game that inspired this whole video series. The game that inspired me to think about these Mega Man X games in these least backtracking context half a decade ago in the year 2015. And if that doesn't make your skin crawl, I don't know what will. The criminally underrated Mega Man X3. Yeah, it's no secret, behind X1, Mega Man X3 is my second favorite X game and is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. I have been obsessed for years with proving to people that the claim that this game is filled with backtracking, it's a myth, a hoax. To the point where on my ancient LP channel, I played through the game three times in a row. One of which was to show the difference between a least backtracking run of X3 and a weakness order run of X3. Before we get into any of that though, there are of course more versions of X3 than any other X game. Seriously, it's on SNES, PS1, Saturn, Windows 95, and has the Zero Project lineup. However, this video will not bring any attention to any of that stuff. The final version of the Zero Project hack makes changes that affect this run, but since it's not official, I don't think it's within the scope of the guide video. And we'll get its own video one day. The 5th gen ports of X3 only change the music, the sound effects, and add cutscenes, and a higher degree of transparency effects on water and clouds. So there really isn't anything different about it besides cosmetics. Something I say here will apply if you're playing any version of the game. The intro stage once again need not be commented on as it doesn't involve any collectibles, bringing us to the 8 Maverick stages of X3. As we start our journey on Tunnel Rhino stage, a fairly simple level to start on. Here you can find the first sub-tank just lying out in the open, so be sure to grab that. Sub-tanks serve as a permanent upgrade that restores your lost health and can be refilled by collecting health pickups when you yourself are at full health. Other than that, we can't get anything else in this stage, so defeat Tunnel Rhino and get his weapon, Tornado Fang, which is crucial for the item game in X3. Bring us to where the most popular weakness order begins, Blizzard Buffalo's stage. With Tornado Fang, you can shadow the blocks protecting the first heart tank, which increase X's health by two units each. Right at the end of the level, you can leap from this platform here to find the first Dr. Light capsule, the foot parts which relax, dash horizontally and vertically. Definitely a top tier foot part in the series. From here, backtrack to where this outside area begins and use the foot parts to make the jump to get the sub tank and then defeat Buffalo by exploiting his AI. His weapon, Frost Shield, is a must-have. X3 is often criticized for high damage output at the start of the game. A way to combat this is in the Super Nintendo version of the game. Frost Shield will drop health from enemies like 98% of the time, which is incredibly useful for sub-tank grinding and gaining back lost health. Now at this point, Dr. Doppler will send out the Nightmare Police to kill X and Zero, Bit, Bite, and Vile Mark II. This is actually way less complicated than it looks. Bit is the first of the two you're forced to fight. He'll appear in whichever stage you do third, fourth, or fifth. For me, these levels will be Blast Hornet, Neon Tiger, and Toxic Seahorse, so Bit will appear in any one of those stages. We have one of his two weaknesses, Frost Shield, so he's a non-issue for me. His other weakness is Triad Thunder, if you were curious. Blast Hornet stage is a simple one. Just remember to use Tornado Fang to drop through this ceiling into the bottom floor you'll find the N Ride Armor. The one-off Ride Armors from previous games have been turned into a collectible in this one, and for whatever reason this is the one you must collect first before using any of the others. The Ride Armor makes short work of the level obstacle that's only here if you have not beaten Gravity Beetle first. And by jumping to this ledge you'll climb up and find the Heart Tank. From there it's a straight shot to the boss, which is a predictable enough pattern to deal with I find. Neon Tiger. Right at the beginning you can vertically dash to get the sub tank, then use Tornado Fang on this wall to reach the arm parts which function similar to the second armor arm parts, only the ones for the third armor can combine into a screen wave attack that kills most things in its path. However, with the downside that it doesn't abuse iframes like the second armor did. At the end of the stage, the wall leads right to the heart tank, as Neon Tiger is a pretty tough boss buster only, however I think with three sub tanks collected, and they're hopefully full by now, you can get through these without issue. Just have to put up with playing the waiting game. Toxic Seahorse is easily one of my favorite levels in the game, mainly because of the cool atmosphere and the badass music. Right here where you have to go forward, you can keep wall jumping to find the heart tank. Right here at the start of the underwater portion, use a charged frost shield to create an ice block to float to the top of the water and find the next ride armor. From there, just reach the end of the stage, making short work of the boss, as we do have his weakness. With Blast Hornet beaten, we can grab the heart tank of Gravity Beetle stage without effort. And we can use the vertical air dash to grab the underwater ride armor, now making a beeline for the boss fight. Now we reach Volt Catfish's stage. I should mention that Bite appears in stages 6, 7, and 8 of your run. We have both of his weaknesses, Tornado Fang and Race Splasher, so he's not a big deal. Back to the stage, use this elevator to reach the top and find a way to reach the heart tank. Later, ride another elevator to the top and use Gravity Well, charged up with the arm parts to float this platform up to the body parts capsule, which reduces the damage by 50%. When getting hit, a shield will emit around you that reduces damage by 75% when active. Come up this wall to the right armor capsule and use one to crash through the floor here and find the last sub-tank. Then just make it to the end of the stage as Tornado Fang rips the boss apart. 
with Triad Thunder in our arsenal, we can get back to Tunnel Rhino stage and use the charge attack to grab the heart tank and the head parts, which displays a map of the area at the start of every stage, highlighting where the secrets are. Completing the third armor, but it's an eh, unlockable. There is no Street Fighter power in X3, but there is a superpower move, and to get to it, you must find Vile's Capsule, which can be found in conspicuous locations of Volt Catfish's stage, Blizzard Buffalo's stage, and Crush Crawfish's stage. Most players would probably find Vile in Volt Catfish's level, if I had to guess one. Here, you need to use Vile's weakness, Ray Splasher, to kill him. I should mention, using the weakness on the Nightmare Police bosses will kill them for good, leaving different bosses in their place in the castle stage. But if you don't, then they come back around for round two. Killing Vile with his weakness will be important for later, but now, Crush Crawfish. Use a charge Triad Thunder right here to get the last ride armor. Go up to use a ride armor and drop here to use said ride armor to blow a hole in the wall that grabs the final heart tank, and with that, you have all the stages collectibles in the game. You can also glitch Crawfish's AI like thus. Now with the castle stages. With all these parts combined, at full health, drop down this pit to find a pink capsule that grants X the golden armor. This gives X all the enhancement chip abilities. In the four stages that did not have a Dr. Light capsule in them, you could find a pink capsule that enhanced a part you already had, although you could only have one. I say wait until the gold armor, as it's better to have all than have one. These include the Hyper Crash, allowing you to shoot charge shots without charging, the Double Dash, which speaks for itself, more damage reduction, and healing while standing still, bringing us to Doppler Stage 2. If you beat Vile earlier with his weakness, make it to this point and pause, press R to switch to zero, and beat the mini boss with him. But be careful because of the fact that zero takes damage like glass in this game. If you die as zero, you lose him for good at any point in the game, which is really stupid, but we're dealing with the rules we have to work with. Killing this mini boss as zero will damage him enough to where he grants X his Z Saber, which kills bosses in two hits instead of one. But you can use this superpower move without being at full health, which is great. I usually don't collect this as I prefer to have zero in the ending and credits with X than to not have him. But anyway, after clearing the boss rush in Doppler, you reach Sigma. Do this to his first phase with the spinning blade. And shoot the exhaust port of the second phase, Kaiser Sigma, and you'll clear him in no time. Don't aim for the head, it's a false weak spot. Now, here's this part that's really annoying. You have to climb this wall right as the virus head shows up, and you'll probably avoid the fire completely. But if you don't, you die and you have to do the whole thing over again. And with that, you've beaten Mega Man X3. If we just used the weakness order, we would have had to backtrack to several more stages than we did, like it's X5 or something, but in this run, there's just as much backtracking in this game as in X1 and X4 as X. So you can safely say you're now a part of the class of peeps that know X3 is a good game. Like me. But yeah, with X3 ending, so ends the guide series. I did intend to make it a thing for the whole X series and maybe other Mega Man games, but while these videos were very well received, not that many people were interested in them, which I know... Views shouldn't be my only interest, but it's more like I want to make videos people want to see, and I know people want Mega Man, and I want to play Mega Man, so I'll just come up with something else and see if people dig that. But as for X3, I don't know if I could ever repay this game for the joy discovering this perfect run gave me in 2015. But I try by continuing to tell the world that I think X3 is a great game, and I hope this video helped other people see that as well.